waiting for the draft. That is what to the pain means. Live from the Ram Cave, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is Ramview, the April 17th, 2024 edition, brought to you by Kistler Law Firm. Injured in an auto accident, need help, got questions, call Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. That's Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. And check out KistlerLawFirm.com. That's one word. KistlerLawFirm.com. Kistler Law, they've been fighting for you since 92. And by Temple City Auto Repair, having some auto issues, get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp, a place where your life can change. So, yeah, um, it is to the pain. You know, I, I, I it's funny you know, people think the moment right after the Super Bowl ends is a downtime, but that's not really a downtime anymore because teams are making those cuts and, and trimming their roster for salary cap issues. Then you got the free agency period hit with the start of the new season. And uh, the longest stretch, I truly believe, is this stretch between uh, now, between the start of the new season, free agency period, which goes for about three days for the big name free agents. And then it's the draft. And uh, I'm just ready, like, let's get on with it. Okay, you know, let's get on with the draft. Um, I don't mind immersing myself in mocks, but one of the things we've noticed in the trends here is that is that uh, people are getting kind of overwhelmed with all the mocks because anybody can do it now. We're going to look at a mock today by NBC Sports that just seems, wow, that just, just doesn't seem right. And again, I go back to a guy like Manuel Correa here, knocking out a Jonah Ellis uh, two weeks before everyone else did. And uh, and we don't have to be held hostage by these guys anymore in the KBM is that your insights in many ways, in many ways, not all, of course, not all of us are perfect, but uh, are just as good as others. So let's hit into some Ram stuff and then we'll go around the uh, NFL and other places. And then, of course, we will talk a little bit of draft thought and take answer questions here. Uh, and uh, look at this date in Rams history, which is pretty significant. And it's pretty significant because uh, this date is just another one of those dates where the Rams help build uh, that ongoing Frisco dynasty. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Rams, uh, former running back Royce Freeman is signed with the Dallas Cowboys. We didn't really expect him back, but you know, for what he cost the Rams and what he gave the Rams, Hey, thank you, Royce Freeman, right? Thank you, Royce Freeman. Someone asked me, Joe, well, what do you not want to have happen in the draft? Uh, well, what happened in the draft last year was uh, I didn't really want the Rams to draft Stetson Bennett. Uh, and uh, I was drinking Clayton Toon Kool-Aid, and the Rams moved up to draft Stetson Bennett. Uh, someone asked me, what do I not want the Rams to do this year? I do not want them to draft Spencer Rattler. Just don't. You, you, you moved up. Got a fourth round pick invested in, in Stetson Bennett. You got Jimmy G for two years, I think. Let's play it out and let's see where we go from there. I really don't want to see Spencer a draft pick wasted on Spencer Rattler, okay? Uh, I watched the pressers that were uh, posted. Uh, it's on the Rams site. You can go to the Rams uh, website and see it there. I think you can see it on YouTube as well. Uh, the pressers that showed uh, Puka Nakua, Tredavious White, Ernest Jones, and Rob Havenstein uh, talking uh, – to the, to the media after uh, players reported for uh, voluntary workouts, you know, you don't really find out anything new in these things. You just don't. Uh, and that's why generally I don't watch them. I kind of watch them just because I want to get an idea of the nature of the player. Um, this goes back, I think it was two years ago, heading into 2022. Uh, I, I remember watching Terrell Lewis being interviewed and he was calm and he was sedate, nice guy. But you know what he wasn't? He wasn't angry about not playing in the Super Bowl the previous season. He wasn't, he didn't see, I don't even think he was, a, I think he was a healthy scratch. And he didn't come in with any chip on his shoulder. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm angry. I didn't play. And you just knew he was doomed. And by December of that year, the Rams put him in the street and his career is pretty much over. He's bouncing around on some practice squads now. But you watch 
this uh, presser here with uh, Nakua, White, or Jones, and Havenstein. And uh, what you came away with was these are really high character people, right? And I think it's an overlooked uh, thing. Uh, but since the start of the McSneed era, which I say the McSneed era is 2017 when Sean McVay arrived as head coach and less Snead, let's give him credit. You know, you get the job when you're younger and you mature, you're given time to grow in your job. Uh, not that he was bad before, but by 2017, there, there was this approach coming and, and uh, he's been great. You know, I don't have any problems with less Snead. Um, and then you see in this McVay, this McSneed era, the Rams developed this culture or pattern of having players that you fall in love with, right? Uh, watching these guys being interviewed uh, the other day, they were fantastic. And just the way they answered, their attitude, their disposition, their body language, uh, it was pretty amazing. You know, we know about Cooper Cup, right? Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, right? These guys were, man, we can't lose these guys. We love these guys. These are our favorite guys. And we know how Ram fans felt about Robert Woods going. Robert Woods in that short period, as long as I've been a Ram fan, became one of my favorite Ram players of all time. I remember after the 2020 season, we knew John Johnson was a goner. And it was like, man, anything, just keep John Johnson. Uh, and, uh, of course, the Rams don't keep safeties, and it turned out to be the smart move. But, you know, watching Nakua, White, Jones, Havensteins, these are guys you never want to see leave the team. You know, the Rams, the McSneed era has shown great skill at finding talent on the second and third day. But what else have they done? They continue to find high character people, right, that buy into the program, that uh, that are football players, but also uh, team guys, right? Uh, Darian Kendrick last fall, you know, he got arrested because he was out after midnight. And we know nothing good ever happens after midnight. Uh, he also had a, had a firearm in his car. And uh, that was huge news because in the last seven years, and let's just start with their time in L.A., what scandal has the Rams had? You know, what scandal has a player had, right? We even see the Chiefs with the Hunt family. You know, Tyreek Hill's had his issues. Uh, you know, Rasheed Rice has had his issues. Kareem Hunt was basically kicked to the curb by the Chiefs because of his uh, personal issues. But with the Rams, what scandal has a player had? What arrests, uh, domestic violence stories, uh, you know, TMZ will find it, right, if it's there. Uh, you know, leaving the scene of an accident, uh, a DUI. Uh, you just don't see that happen with Rams, with the Rams players. And, you, 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 know, we, you know, we shouldn't just judge somebody by an interview, right? I get that. Some people are very sociopathic. My dad was a criminal. I know people are thinking, huh, what? My dad was a legitimate criminal, and uh, no one ever met him that didn't like him. And he was that kind of guy. But, you know, you just see an authentic uh, attitude with these players and how they handle themselves in front of the press. You know, especially impressive was Ernest Jones and his attitude after not getting extended. Right. I think we all wanted him extended and and maybe next year it will happen. Uh, we hope it happens uh, if he has another great year. But we like I love Ernest Jones. Ernest Jones is great. And how he sees this as an opportunity to to prove himself again and, and maybe do even better for himself. Yeah, you got to love Ernest Jones, right? You do. You got to feel really good about Ernest Jones being at the center of that defense this year. Uh, Ernest Jones is in his contract year. He didn't get <laughs> he didn't get extended, you know, but he didn't exactly take the Brandon Ayuk approach, did he? Right. And uh, there's a difference in your character and the players that you draft and uh, where I think the reason the Rams have a Super Bowl and John Lynch doesn't. Right. John Lynch up in Frisco doesn't. Um, I loved Havenstein answering a really weak question by the media asking, you know, what does the team need Steve Avila to be as its new center? Well, they, you know, it's like you could get real smart alecky and say they need him to be good. Okay. They need him to be good. Uh, but, uh, but Havenstein basically said, he says, Steve needs to be Steve. A great answer. And then he goes on and says, Coleman, she doesn't need to be Coleman Shelton, Brian Allen, or John Sullivan. And I thought it was great bringing up Sullivan and Allen, some guys that were there a few years ago, that were starters. You know, Sullivan was the starting center on the Super Bowl 53 team in his last run in the NFL. And it just showed me an appreciation for Havenstein, knowing those who's played alongside of him, right? Uh, and also, you got to think about Havenstein. He looks good. He's going into his 10th year. And that, you know, sometimes we can think that's ancient. We got to start replacing him. But, you know, how long did uh, Andrew Whitworth play at a more difficult position, right? How, how, uh, how, how are we seeing Trent Williams' age, right? 
you, unless there's an injury here, wouldn't it be great if the Rams could score another three or four years out of Havenstein, at least through the Super Bowl window? Uh, one of the best draft picks, right, the Rams have had, uh, you know, second round, 57th overall out of Wisconsin in uh, 2015. Yeah, I really do like Rob Havenstein. I just love that that steadiness of Rob Havenstein. Also, you don't get with the Rams, you don't get a lot of complaining about contracts, right? And if you grew up a Rams fan, you know there was a holdout every year. There was always a struggle between the players and uh, and ownership. Even under Carol Rosenblum, even under Don Klosterman, there was always struggle. And uh, you just don't hear that too often. You, and, and I thought it was interesting when Tredavious White was being interviewed, how he said he, he learned about the Rams from Vaughn Miller and Taylor Rapp talking well about Sean McVay. And, you know, none of us were crying any tears when Taylor Rapp left, but uh, but Taylor Rapp and Vaughn Miller and Vaughn Miller's here, but less than half a season. And uh, and yet they're speaking glowingly of the Rams. So, again, all the more reason for Ram fans to not only appreciate <laughs> Uh, the nuance of this team, you know, the the moving the draft picks for quality players, all that stuff they've done, but just in appreciating there is a certain bar they expect their players to live by, and uh, they seem to acquire those kind of players, and so you got to appreciate it. And they'll have 11 chances uh, in about a week and a half here to uh, to to improve on that. They got picks 19, 52, 83, and 99. Uh, 154, 155, 196, 209, 213, 217, and 254. Okay, around the NFL, guys, I promise if you do have questions, I will get to you. You know that. Um, around the NFL and other places, Aiden O'Connell, I saw that article on him. Didn't read the whole thing, but he's looking to compete for the Raiders. Uh, Aiden O'Connell was a guy the Rams had interviewed last year, and he was one of the few quarterbacks. I really didn't want them to bring him in either because I'm a Purdue guy. I've always rooted for Purdue. Purdue's the cradle of quarterbacks, right? At least it used to be. And uh, I didn't think much of Aiden O'Connell, but I thought for a rookie with all that stuff that was happening in uh, Las Vegas last year, I thought he handled himself well. Do I think he's a long-term answer at starter? No. Um, but I do think this. I think the Raiders have enough talent already, when you look at Devontae Adams and everything else, that it would be a high crime and misdemeanor if they let a quarterback slip by them at number 13. I know they need secondary help. I know they need help at guard on the offensive line. But the AFC West is not going to get any easier. Uh, uh, Sean Payton is going to straighten things out in Denver. And uh, and I'm very optimistic about Harbaugh and uh, the Chargers going forward. And then you, you look at the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the Chiefs, right? They're the Duke of uh, the NFL, right? The Chiefs are the Chiefs. They've been on TV more times than leave it to Beaver. And, uh, and it's not going to get any easier for the Raiders. And so I just think they got to take some swings at some of these quarterbacks coming through. And if you whiff, you whiff, but you got to keep going in and looking at these quarterbacks because you could lose another half decade and not do anything for your fans. And at some point, maybe, maybe patience will run out with uh, the Vegas crowd, uh, with the Raiders not putting a good product down the field. Around the NFL and other places does take us in the other places, all the the, ha, the screaming about Caitlin Cart's contract. She's not even in the highest part of her contract. She's not even going to make a hundred grand from the WNBA. And people are complaining that, you know, the women aren't being treated fairly and Caitlin Clark's being paid too much and she hasn't done anything yet. Well, again, WNBA has been living off NBA welfare and the entitlement of complaint. If the WNBA doesn't like it, separate itself and uh, live on its own merit. And that's all you got to say about that. I, with that said, you know, we wish Caitlin Clark the best. Okay. We wish her the best. Um, also all that other stuff that came out, you know, they were talking about the Aaron Rodgers interview where, you know, he's on a podcast and he's talking about the vax and everything and, and, and stuff. And they say, Oh, sure. You know, I saw on social media trending Rodgers gets away with saying that, but Colin Kaepernick gets blackballed. And, uh, I'll tell you the difference. Here's the difference. Rogers didn't it didn't do it in uniform while at work, right? He didn't pause on a Sunday and grab a microphone and start doing that stuff, right? Uh, he he did it on his own time, and uh, you know where Colin Kaepernick went to his place of employment and did it there, uh, and in, upset and, and insulted an entire fan base in the process. Uh, and, and and let's just look at it this way: uh, Colin Kaepernick couldn't carry Aaron Rodgers' jockstrap as a quarterback. <laughs> he just couldn't. He's not that good. Uh, he lost his job to Blaine Gabbert, right? And uh, 
and stuff. And so that, that's the difference, right? If Colin Kaepernick had started his activism, not in uniform, uh, going behind a microphone, going on podcasts, going on interviews, doing all, he, he, it never would have been an issue, but he became an issue and he wasn't good enough to overcome his issues. All right. All right. Also around the NFL and other places, uh, I was actually, I actually listened to a, an episode of uh, Colin Coward and uh, the herd and, and he was slamming on Tim Tebow again. Tebow hasn't thrown a pass in the NFL for 10 years, but it, it shows a real weakness in Colin Coward's game, right? It shows he was, I remember listening to Coward, and this is why I stopped listening to Coward, was every week the Broncos were winning, right? They started one and four, benched Kyle Orton, a Purdue quarterback, NFL quarterback, and went to Tim Tebow and accommodated Tebow, and the Broncos went on a run. A team that had no business going on a run went on a run. And uh, as Kaepernick was talking about Tim Tebow being a flash in the pan, saying it was only because of his faith he was interesting, well, was was it a religion thing? Was it a faith thing that took a 1-14 in to the playoffs? Was it a faith thing with Tebow that let him beat the Steelers in the first round? I, I just think sometimes the KBM, and like I said, Colin Coward, when he's talking sports, uh, he has the best talent in the business. But it just shows the small-mindedness of so many things. Tebow would have been out of the league in two years anyway because his style of game uh, wasn't built to last. And no, he wasn't a perfect quarterback. But was it really his faith that caused them to go to the playoffs after starting off 1-4? and four? Was it really his faith that beat the Steelers? What do you think, Steeler fan, Rob? Was it his faith, right? Or what? Was it just his energy? Was it just the style the Broncos were playing that year, you know, uh, anyway, we're, we'll let's move on. I'm Joe Terrosa and I was a sports writer for 21 years. And uh, now I get to do Ram view. Thanks to our sponsors uh, at uh, Kistler law. And, uh, and, and I write books and my books are on Amazon. And I'm really happy to say my latest book um, uh, game day in the Ram cave is in its very last round of edits. And, uh, and so we're going to get the cover worked out and then, uh, we're going to publication. I, I independently publish, so I don't have to wait. I also like to independently publish because, um, you know, you know, traditional publishing houses, they do give you an advance, but it takes you forever, if not never, to get back that uh, to a point where you're getting royalties. Uh, uh, I've had friends who got the advance and you get the credibility, but you don't necessarily get the dough. Uh, they get 50 cents a book in some cases. You never make back your advance with that. Um, and I make back more by doing it independently. And so I'm really excited about getting uh, that out, hopefully within the month. Uh, it's got, I got a real timetable now and we're happy As, ever since my wife got hit. My schedule, as you know, has been kind of crazy, uh, but happy to share that. Thank you for your support with the books and the show. Check out our sponsors if you need them. Uh, and uh, let's look at some questions right now. Oh, it. The writing and the RAM view here support me in my day job. I pastor a small church in Burbank, Burbank Faith, Faith Nazarene. And you can find us right here on YouTube at Burbank Faith Virtual, BurbankFaithVirtual.com. And Burbank Faith Virtual across social media. If you have any questions about that, please let me know and we will go from there. Okay, let's go. We got Tim Burns, USA expat, and Bill in the house. All right. Okay, Tim Burns, Rams traveling to meet shop is a good sign. You know what? I'm going to get into that. A little bit uh yeah i you know you know it's stuff starting to leak out a lot more it was really quiet on the rams front mr burns in terms of who they were interviewing rams are really good about keeping those things uh down uh on the down low and so they're flying to see chop robinson uh okay so chop robinson right is he a number 19 pick you certainly not going to move up to take chop robinson or would you move back and take chop robinson uh usa expat not a fan of chop I know. I, I've been there on CHOP. I really am. If they drafted CHOP at 52, I'm down with the get down. If they drop CHOP, if they move back first round and draft, I'm, I'm not feeling it because he's a beast, but there's no production. And I, I you, know, you just want a little production. Uh, we'll see. USA Expat. Some of my favorite pass rushers. Favorite rushers are interior defensive linemen. Nuggets in the second and third. Y yeah, there absolutely are. I, I truly agree with that. Um, you know, that world has changed so much because these lines are so extended now. You know, you got you got uh, edge rushers lining up wide nine, right? That means outside the tight end and they're getting to the quarterback. And and you think of all the pressure on these offensive linemen and these OCs having to chip those guys and keep them out of the backfield. And that really opens up the game 
for a Kobe Turner, nine sacks as a rookie, as an interior defender. And so, yeah, those guys are out there. It's truly something to think about. Tim Burns, uh, 99, had Tony Horn. Hecker was our special team stud recently. We need a difference maker on special teams. Hey, there you go. Um, that 99 team was special. I We we liked Tony Horn, too. We used to talk about him all the time at the mid. Uh, we liked Tony Horn, man. He liked him. He was really fast. Uh, let's see, USA expat. Xavier Leggett could double as a special teams returner. Wink, wink. There you go. Look at this. Guys are answering guys' questions. You guys don't even need me. Tim Burns. Uh, Peyton will be fine. He was uh, different uh, as Falk's running back coach at – um sdsu okay all right we'll buy that uh tim burns lebron had a hundred a hundred million before he ever hit the nba yeah i'm sure nike got him some dough uh when he got there bill did you watch the video of puka and cup working out together how cool was that yeah you know i again i think it speaks to the character that we talked about at the top of the show uh they got a high character guy in cup uh, when uh, Allen Robinson got to L.A., even though Rob Bobby Wood, Bobby Trees was leaving town, who was tight with Woods with a cup, Cup embraced Allen Robinson. And uh, I just think it shows the character of the guys the Rams are drafting. And uh, you want that. You want that to emulate that. I know, um, was it Havenstein talked about Aaron Donald uh, the last five years that he was playing was constantly kind of sharing with new guys and teaching and instructing and and that's because that's a credit to the Rams culture, right? That's a credit to the Rams culture. And uh, it'll be exciting to see as time goes on and there's no drastic change that we get another five to 10 years out of McVeigh and McSneed and see this, what potentially could be a very special long and deep run for the Rams. Steve Ramirez, how do you feel about this talk that the Rams will go offense in the draft since McSneed's uh, has, uh, have always gone offense in the top picks? I hope not. I have no problem with that, uh, Mr. Ramirez. I would love – I wouldn't have any problem about the Rams drafting a, a Brian Thomas Jr. at number 19, if indeed that's where we're at. Um, again, we want to stay uh, We want to stay ahead of the curve here because Demarcus Robinson, one-year contract, 2-2 Atwell's on his last year. Uh, Cup's game, you know, Cup is older now. He's in his 30s. And Nakua's game is so physical, uh, you know, chances for him going down are legit. So I have no problem with the Rams setting up for the future with a um, Brian Thomas. I, I have none at all. If, you know, he's a character guy. But again, you can draft a receiver at 52 as well. Uh, yeah, I, again, I think we're at a place for me, for me, in McSneed we trust, right? In McSneed we trust. Bill, uh, maybe the chop news is a smokescreen by the Rams. Oh, man, are you reading my copy, Bill? Are you reading my copy? I had a theory about that. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Tim Burns, uh, Puka is yoked this year. He looks different, doesn't he? He really does. You, you, you can tell he's probably had a conversation on how I can avoid the sophomore jinx or the sophomore slump. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that he did look good. Uh, Brian B pulled back his question. Okay, Brian B throw me another one. Manuel Carrillo. What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for clicking on. And, uh, if you guys have any more questions, throw them my way. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But still, now back half, we are going to talk a little more draft. Uh, Rams update here. Let me ask you this. Who would you trade up for? Steve Ramirez, Tim Burns, USA expat, uh, Bill, uh, Manuel. Who, who would you trade up for? Uh, you know, is Byron Murphy, which is trending on a lot of mock boards going to the Rams, or even a Johnny Newton, although Johnny Newton's not jumping up to the 15th or 14th spot. Is Byron Murphy good enough to move up five slots for or four slots from 19 to 14 or 19 to 13? Is he good enough to move up that far? Um, of course, the Raiders at 13, they're not going to draft a DT, but uh, I don't think they would. But is he good enough to move up for? You know, is there a cornerback good enough uh, to move up for considering how the Rams room is right now and how it looks set? Uh, you know, and there are so many offensive tackles in this draft. Uh, doesn't it seem like you have to be so, so sure before you jump up and take a look at a Joe Alt or a Talisi Fuaga from Oregon State? Troy Fontenot seems to be dropping back. Olam Fashionu seems to be dropping back. Um, and uh, and so do you really need to move up for one? Tight end? No. Quarterback? Uh, I think the Jimmy G signing, uh, I just don't see the Rams. I see if a quarterback falls to them, maybe making a move. 
Uh, but I don't see them trading up for a quarterback. Now, here's the one that's interesting. A lot of receiver talent, uh, but would you up, move up five slots for Romo Dunze? You know, if he's still around, that would be really interesting to see Romo Dunze outside of the top 10. Malik Neighbors outside of the top 10. Marvin Harrison outside of the top 10. I don't know if anyone envisions that. But would you move up a couple of slots for a Brian Thomas? You know, that one would be pretty interesting. Moving up one or two slots there it seems reasonable, but interesting. But here's the one that a couple of you guys hit on here. Um, at edge, Dallas Turner and Jared Verse, that's something to think about, right? And so I started thinking when I saw this visit with Chop Robinson, if it's not a smokescreen, I was thinking maybe it's a contingency. Maybe it's just a contingency that if the Rams see some 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 latitude there and weird mocks have, you know, you know, J.J. McCarthy in the top four and and uh, Marvin Harrison dropping back and Jaden Daniels dropping into the into the into the you know number 12 or 13 slot and some of them don't even have JJ McCarthy. The mock drafts are all over the place right now. And every time there's some weird mock draft, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse kind of drop back. And and so I'm thinking that if Jared Verse, Jared Verse or Dallas Turner, uh Turner's the more talented, uh, you know, they're both extremely talented. Turner's the more talented, Verse is the higher motor. Uh turn they're both 6'4. Turner is Runs about 242, verse runs about 260. Um, you know, but if one of them's there at 12 or 13, could you see the Rams making a big move and doing that one? And that's the one that's interesting. And and if they can't get it done, is Chop Robinson a guy that they're thinking, hey, if we move back, then we can hit Chop Robinson, that he feels like a contingency. Uh, and I don't mean to upset Steve Ramirez because I don't like to upset my viewers. I like people clicking on. I need my hits. Um, it's like a narcotic. But uh I'll dance with uh, with uh, Laitu Latu out of UCLA. I'll dance with him. But again, I can't get past given his injury history, which was a neck thing that technically he was forced to retire when he was at Washington, that everyone is okay with that. No one's really talking about that. But all you hear are these this reluctance from experts given Michael Penix's history. And Latu's history seems just as severe, right? And uh, and so, so I am a little questioning about that. Uh, but... You know, is Chop Robinson a smokescreen? I don't know. Uh, but maybe a contingency because I could feel that, like, what's really worth trading up for? And, uh, and you know, the Rams went to war with Alaric Jackson last year, and it wasn't Alaric Jackson's fault they lost in that playoff game, right? If the Rams had had a kicker, huh, uh, the Rams would have been, could have been possibly playing in the NFC title game. Uh, you know, yeah, everyone, want, I want offensive linemen every draft. Drop him in the first 100 every draft, but but uh, I don't know if there's an offensive lineman that they want to give a ton of draft capital for to move all the way up in the draft, right? You still you got no room to restructure, so I don't get that. Uh, but an edge, an edge that's a big time edge that you have some expectation from a Dallas Turner or a Jared Verse, yeah, I can see that. I can see that uh, easily happening. Uh, Chop Robinson, of course, uh, Rams are flying out to interview him. Uh, they interviewed uh, TCU safety, Mark Perry. He's projected late sixth, seventh, all the way across the board, but he is versatile. He has played slot. He's played deep safety. Uh, he's done a lot of different things. And so, and the Rams do have a penchant. They do like TCU guys, right? The Rams have a thing for TCU. And so that would be worth keeping an eye on is Mark Perry. And then Jace McClellan, the Alabama running back. Six foot two twelve, right? Uh, he was originally a fourth round projection. Rams have interviewed him, and lately he's been falling to the seventh round. But I wouldn't argue with that. I wouldn't argue with that at all. Okay, so here's the mock draft that I saw today from Connor Rogers, I believe it is. I don't know who he is. He just works for NBC Sports, and this was his mock draft. And I thought it just seemed really interesting. Um, First pick, Caleb Williams. Okay, we're all done there. Uh, second pick, he has the commanders going with Drake May, which is trending against Jaden Daniels. But wait till you see what he does with Jaden Daniels. He has New England bypassing Daniels and a quarterback at number three and taking Marvin Harrison Jr. And then he has the Cardinals taking Malik Neighbors at wide receiver. He has the Chargers taking Joe Alt, the Giants taking Brock Bowers, 
And then first time I've seen in almost a month, Olu Fashino back in the top 10. He has the Titans taking Fashino, the Penn State guy, at number seven. Excuse me. A little overclement there. Okay. Uh, at number eight, he has the the Falcons taking Jared Verse. And, uh, yeah, that's one to think about if you're a Ram fan. And uh, instead of Dallas Turner, Dallas Turner had been locked in at number eight uh, for a lot of mock drafts. Number nine, Roman Dunze to the Bears. Fontenot to the Jets. Michael Penix to the Vikings at number 11. Michael Penix, he projects, before Jaden Daniels or Bo Nix and have him going to the Vikings at number 11. Jaden Daniels then going to the Broncos at 12. Talisi Fuaga going to the Raiders at uh, number 13. Uh, number 14, Amarius Mims, the guy who only started eight games in Georgia. Uh, and I'm not sure. He didn't play left tackle. And I don't think Warren McClendon played left tackle when he was at Georgia. He's the guy with the Rams. The Rams drafted. So did Warren McClendon keep Amarius Mims on the bench at Georgia? I don't think Warren McClendon was a left tackle at Georgia. Let me know. Tell me if you know that. I go back and look it up. Uh, Cooper DeGene going to the Colts at 15. J.C. Latham going to the Seahawks. Quinion Mitchell going to Jacksonville. Jerzon Newton going to Cincy. And then this guy has Dallas Turner. I've never seen Dallas Turner this far down. Alabama edge, 19, going to the Rams. Steelers taking uh, Brian Thomas at 20. Graham Barton jumping ahead of Jackson Powers Johnson. The Duke O-lineman, who's kind of versatile and more interior, but they say he can flash out to, to tackle, going to the Dolphins at 21. Nate Wiggins at 22. <coughs> Byron Murphy dropping to 23 for the Vikings, uh, going well after uh, Jerzon Newton. Interesting there. Terry and Arnold going to the um, – I'm sorry, Jackson Powers Johnson going to the Cowboys. Green Bay taking Terry and Arnold. Uh, Tampa Bay taking Latu Latu. Kool-Aid McKinstry going to the Cardinals at 27. Troy Franklin back in the first round at 28 to Oregon, head of Keon Mitchell, uh, or Keon Coleman, I'm sorry. Uh, and then Chop Robinson going to the Lions at 29. And then, man, I had not seen this. Jalen Polk coming all the way from the third round, all the way from the third round, going to the 40, to the Baltimore Ravens at number 30. Tyler Guyton going to the 49ers, which makes sense, the Oklahoma guy. And then Ricky Pearsall, the guy the Rams interviewed, who's projected second round, projected uh, as going in the first round, number 32, to the Chiefs overall. Real interesting mock draft there. Really, I I, I hadn't seen one like that, and uh, I, I don't know if I buy all of it. And so when you think your mock draft is crazy, just remember what they did at NBC Sports. Okay, on this date in Rams history, in 1997, they sent the overall sixth pick, 67th pick, 102nd pick, and 207th pick to the New York Jets for the number one pick overall. And that number one pick, drumroll please, turned into Orlando Pace. Okay, that's good news. Uh, on this day, uh, in 1999, the Rams uh, acquired a fifth round and a seventh round pick from the Baltimore Ravens for Tony Banks. That was another good trade, okay? And on that same day, they drafted Torrey Holt, sixth overall, and Dre Bly, 41st overall. All right, that's not bad. Born on this day in 1935, Lamar Lundy. Uh, you know, Lamar Lundy, uh, in the unofficial sack record, only has 60 career sacks. But remember who he's playing with, okay? Uh, and uh, and on top of that, you know, his first five years in the league, he didn't play a defensive end. He was playing tight end. And, uh, and so he had a really nice career for the Rams. 68, 69 combined, he only played nine games. In 70, he was traded to the Chargers and uh, for an undisclosed pick that was never, never taken because he retired three months later. Uh, born on this day in 1972, uh, Keith Lyle, free safety Virginia. Rams drafted him, 71st overall, third round. Uh, and uh, he, he start, played the Rams seven seasons. Uh, started for six, picked off 28 passes. He was a playmaker, member of the Super Bowl 34 squad, right? Uh, and and to, to, to throw that in there, that Ram draft in uh, 1994, the team had seven picks in the first 100. They scored Wayne Gandy, who was a solid NFL tackle for 13 years as a starter. Uh, Isaac Bruce, Hall of Famer. Uh, Keith Lyle, and of course, Toby Wright, who gave the Rams some good moments there in some lean years. 
wanted to get that in there. We're going to get back to this 94 draft here in a second because uh, in uh, 1986, um, Terry Greer, who's Terry Greer? Terry Greer was an amazing CFL wide receiver. He, uh, this is for April 18th. So this would be anniversary would be tomorrow. Um, Terry Greer played six seasons in the CFL and he caught 404 passes in those six seasons with the Toronto Argonauts in 1983. He caught 113 passes for over 2000 yards. Right. And, uh, he had been originally an 11th round pick, uh, 304th overall by the Rams in 1980, but he went to uh, CFL. And uh, so he came uh, to the NFL and uh, and he wanted in. And the Rams on this day traded his rights to the Cleveland Browns for a fourth round pick. Right. Fourth round. It turned out to be 96th overall in 1986. Eleven days later, stick with me. Eleven days later, the Rams take that pick that they got from the Browns for the rights to Terry Greer and they sent it uh, along with. Jeff Kemp, and uh, another fourth-round pick, 101st overall, to the San Francisco 49ers for the number three, for the number 71 pick overall, third round in 1986. That that 71st overall pick for the Rams became Hugh Millen, the quarterback out of Washington. Yeah, do I just even have to expound on Hugh Millen? Okay. Um, Jeff Kemp ends up starting six games, plays in 10, Keeps the 49ers afloat that 1986 season after Montana goes down. That fourth round pick that the Rams got for Terry Greer turns out to be Hall of Famer Charles Haley. And the 101st pick in the fourth round, Steve Wallace. Played 11 seasons, starts eight years as a left tackle, and wins three Super Bowls for the 49ers. Now, if you think about this, the Rams didn't hire um, didn't hire uh, Bill Walsh. Okay, they didn't hire Bill Walsh. In 83, they sent uh, Wendell Tyler to the 49ers. In 86, they uh, they did this marvelous deal where they traded within the division a quarterback and two premium picks to get a third rounder, right? To get a third rounder. And um, yeah, that's what the Rams did and extended that 49er dynasty. And then to add to it, in 1994, that year we talked about, where they drafted Wayne Gandy 15th overall. The Rams initially, initially, I think it had the seventh pick overall. The seventh pick. And you know what they did? They said, yeah, good idea. Let's trade back. Okay, not bad. But who did they trade back with? They traded back with the San Francisco 49ers. And who did the 49ers get with that seventh pick? Hall of Famer Bryant Young, right? Hall of Famer Bryant Young. And you wonder why, right? You'll wonder why certain things happened uh, with the Rams. Uh, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Last thing I wanted to throw out there, today is Richie Pettibone's birthday. Richie Pettibone played two seasons with the Rams, 69 and 70. He was a George Allen favorite. Uh, he spent 10 years with the Bears prior to multiple Pro Bowls. Was all pro in 63, 48 career picks. He had a really great NFL career. But the interesting thing about Richie Pettibone is he was traded uh, to the Redskins by the Rams. Not part of the Ramskins trade, but he was traded in August of 71 for a second rounder and a sixth rounder in 1973. Good deal. But here's the thing. George Allen had already traded that second rounder. And that second round pick that was slated for 1973 was upgraded to a first round pick in 1974 for the Rams, right? That's pretty interesting. Interesting. You know, you don't see that too often. All right. So we got that stuff out of there. All right. We got a good audience today. Let's uh, let's see what we got here. Um, all right. Brian B. Nobody is talking about Johnny Newton. That guy is a beast. I hope the Rams snagged the star in the making. Great question, Brian B. Uh, the Illinois guy. Uh, I thought it was interesting in the mock draft. I had not seen Johnny Newton going before Byron Murphy. Um, would you? Would you, How high would you move up to get him? Would you move up a couple or would you wait for him at 19? That's a, that's something to think about. Um, Manuel Correa, I believe he says nobody means there's no one he would move up for. Bill, one of the top wide receivers, top three wide receivers that you would move. You're talking Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze. Okay. Uh, Manuel Correa, yes. Murphy is trending because AD left. And honestly, you know, if they drafted Murphy, I'm not going to be upset. If they drafted Newton, I'm not going to be upset. But I hate to think of them drafting one of these guys in the first round, and the expectation is they got to replace Aaron Donald. 
you're, you're not going to replace Aaron Donald, but you can replace him maybe with some bodies that can stuff up that middle and maybe take a little pressure off Kobe Turner, applying pressure up the middle. Interesting thought. Um, you, Tim Burns, there isn't anyone with moving up. USA expat, no move up for 19 for me either. Would you move out of the first round? Would you move out? Would you move any further past 32? That's that's something to think about. Um, let's see here. Uh, Manuel Correa, J.C. Latham and Amarius Mims will be there at 19. That's a great question. Would you draft Amarius Mims? Can somebody do the homework on that for me and let me know? I think Warren McClendon played right tackle at Georgia. Mims played right tackle. So Warren McClendon, who was, what, fifth round last year, sixth round, played two snaps or so with the Rams. He kept Amarius Mims on the bench. Now, I know a player can improve, but Mims only had eight starts. And that guy that guy feels also awful Greg Robinson to me. And I could be wrong, and forgive me for speaking uh, blasphemy. Um, let's see. Manuel Correa, neither one there. Coverage skills are poor. Okay, I think you're talking about corners. Uh, Steve Ramirez, it depends on the cost. If Odunze gets past 10, I would move up. Ooh, ooh. Latu is better than both. You're saying, Manuel Correa, that Latu is better than Dallas Turner and Jared Verse? All right, that's a big statement there. Uh, Manuel Correa, they're moving back. The Rams are moving back. Okay, Manuel Correa, Verse and Turner, coverage skills are like heck. Really? Do you think they're that bad? I, I, I just don't think anything could be any worse than, than Hoyt. Um, sorry, Hoyt, uh, there we go, uh, in coverage. Uh, USA Expat, move up from number 52. Yeah, that one could be interesting, huh? Because you got a, another third rounder to play with. You don't have a fourth rounder. The Rams have two third rounders. So could they take their second round and a third rounder and move into that 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 uh, supplemental first round that's like from 32 to 39 uh, and, and pick up somebody that maybe dropped out of the first round? That's something to think about. That was what um, ESPN guys had the Rams doing in their last mock draft, sending a second and a third uh to the Panthers to take uh, Michael Penix at 33. I don't know if I would take Penix there, but that would be interesting. And that's something that I probably failed to get into, and maybe we haven't gotten into it enough here, is that we're all talking about that first-round pick. Uh, that's a great point there, uh, USA Expat, is that we know Sneed has the uh, <laughs> the tendency. He will deal after the first round and, uh, and package things together. So something definitely to keep an eye on. Uh, let's see here. Manuel Correa. I would stay at 52 Jonah Ellis or Braylon Trice. Uh, that would be interesting. And I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate with you. If it's Jonah Ellis, the Rams have interviewed both, uh, Ellis and Braylon Trice. Trice is, uh, is technically sound. I'm told this is what I read off a scouting report. It's technically sound, uh, maybe not gifted, uh, physically, but you know, he sounds like one of those guys that's worked himself into being an elite player and uh, and so work ethic and stuff that might fit, you know, slots that the Rams are looking to fill in terms of character of a person. A uh, bill, I would move up to eight and give up 19 and a third rounder and a 2025 first rounder and take one of the elite receivers. Whoa, are you serious? All right, Bill, man, Bill's getting serious here. He's not messing around, taking no prisoners. What do you guys think of Bill's uh, trade? Uh, USA expat, I like moving up from 52 for their favorite receiver, not uh, one or, or or not one of top three. Bill, do you think the Rams will attempt to move out of the second round and move into the first round for a third rounder and a sixth rounder? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I can see moving up into the 30s, but the draft is so deep, right? The draft is so deep uh, that – that uh, I don't know if I have to go that high. I mean, what's the standard? And I know this draft is deeper, but what do they usually say? What do the experts say? After number 15, it's kind of like fluid between 16 and 50 that any of these guys could have been first rounders or second rounders. But for, for, for players that really are game changers, generally they're the first 15 taken. I don't know if that applies this year. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to trade up to get back into the first round again. I, I don't know. Uh, unless... Again, unless they see something, they could take a second and two thirds, get back into the first round and see something they really want. That would be um, interesting. Bill, would you consider doing a live stream when the 18th pick is called? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that would be fun. I, 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 I am thinking of doing something live right after the first night, right? So we can scream and yell at each other. So as soon as the 
what would that what time is that draft going to start? What five o'clock our time or PST, eight o'clock Eastern, and it goes for two hours. I might actually come on for about ten minutes and do a Ram View supplemental uh, and uh, and stuff just to give us all a chance to hoot and holler and scream because they did something we didn't expect. Um, Manual uh, USA Expat, I'd be there. That's an honor, guys. That's really cool. Um, you know, let, let me think about it. I, I, I want to keep my ego in check because, because uh, hey, we're all going to be watching the draft. And as soon as the draft is over, we'll go from there. I know we got the ability to do multiple things now, uh, but uh, but you got to forget, too, I'm human, too, and I might get mad. I might put my football or foot through my flat screen if they end up, you know, taking Spencer Rattler or something in the first round. Uh, I'm very anti-Spencer Rattler. Okay, um, Steve Ramirez. Richie Pettibone was one of my favorite Rams when I discovered football in uh, 1969. Manuel Correa. Mims was injured. Is that the account? Is that the account? Okay, so so it wasn't that McClendon kept Mims on the bench, but Mims was injured. Uh, what's a big guy like that getting injured for? At playing at George, he can't afford to get injured. He's a beast. The guy is like a descendant of the Anak of the Nephilim. He's huge. Uh, but let's put it this way: if the Rams draft him, I'm going to love him. Uh, Dano, I'd be, I'll be there. Uh, okay, I promise. I'll do a show at the conclusion. I'll go live soon as um, the draft ends. Put it that way. First night. Okay, that's what I'll do. Right. I'll, I'll go live first night. It's going to be awkward the second day because the second day is a Friday and we're normally on at five. And I don't want to take anyone away from watching the draft, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. We'll play it by ear. But uh, uh, thank you, Dan. I do appreciate that. Uh, but we will, um, we will. Uh, uh, how do I say this? Uh, do it right after the, the 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 draft ends and on opening night. Thank you, Manuel Correa, Steve Ramirez. In my perfect world, I'd take Murphy at twenty nine, a wide receiver at fifty two, an edge like Gabriel Murphy at eighty three. You know, I, again, you know, I think about it. I was watching the Rams, uh, the, the the pressers that they did with Nakua, Havenstein that I talked about, and I let it run, and then it immediately went to the next video, and it went to Byron Young the day Byron Young was drafted, and uh, and you just saw the emotion on his face, and you, you forget where they drafted Byron Young, right? Third round, what was it, 77th overall, 78th overall? And, uh, and yeah, you know, a Gabe... Uh, uh, a Gabe, uh, Gabriel Murphy at 83. Well, why couldn't that work? Right. Why couldn't that work? And, and, and maybe, you know, I, I think we're worried a little bit about Kobe, uh, Kobe Turner, uh, that, you know, the effect of not having Aaron Donald there next to him and will he take a dip? But, uh, I want to see, is, is it possible that we've just started to see what, um, Byron Murphy has? And uh, he gave us a great year. He had a better rookie year than Anderson at Houston. That was a butt kissing they did. Uh, he had a much better year than that. Um, oh, okay. So I thought you were going to trade back, Steve. Okay, Steve Ramirez means I would take uh, Murphy at 19. All right. Um, Brennan Jackson. Is that the, that's the Washington guy? Washington State guy? Brennan Jackson is better than Murphy from UCLA. Uh, you know, you look at you look at the highlights, right, of all these guys, and I've seen a lot of these highlights. And you look at it and go, "Oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. I like that guy." And you just never know how it's going to turn out. Uh, I have not seen Manuel Correa anything on Austin Booker. Okay, guys, it is. I got forty eight minutes in. I'm going to go to about fifty here. Uh, don't want to go uh, too far past fifty minutes. Uh, something I wanted to pop out here. Uh, April seventeenth, two thousand. Uh, Rams signed Dane Looker as an undrafted free agent. He gave the Rams some clicks. And, and that's the thing that I wanted to bring up too, is that, you know, the draft ends on Saturday and that's when the scramble begins on who's going to sign those undrafted free agents. Right. And, and uh, the Rams have had some big hits. Well, relatively speaking, big hits with undrafted free agents. Uh, Alaric Jackson's an undrafted free agent. Colvin Shelton was an undrafted free agent, right? These guys all bounced around. Uh, also let's see, let's look at April 18th. And one more time, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, in, uh, in 1998 on April 18th, the Rams had the sixth overall pick and they drafted, um, Grant Winstrom, uh, at number 37 at number 65. They, uh, they had the 67th pick. They sent that and a 195 pick 
to the Jets to draft at 65, and they took Leonard Little. How do you guys feel about Leonard Little, right? We know what his story is. He stayed clean after, and he's done some good work since. But do we move past, uh, you know, have people moved past what he did uh, in, in that 1999 year where it cost him his Super Bowl appearance and took the life of, of another individual? I'm always curious what people think about uh, Leonard Little. He's an interesting story. Uh, on this day, I'm sorry, on April 18th, 2003, uh, the Rams drafted uh, Eric Crouch. Uh, out of Nebraska, they spent a third round, 95th overall pick for him. And I just didn't get it. They tried to convert him to receiver, didn't work out. They put him in the street. And then on this day in 2022, the Rams waived Kareem Orr. We should all say thank you to Kareem Orr because he was the one that stepped in in that game after the Rams had that three-game losing streak in 2021. And they decided all the Ram players had COVID, right? And the Rams brought Kareem up Cream up from the practice squad, and he gave him that game. And it wasn't great, but he gave him that game, and he didn't do anything that cost us to lose that game. And then, of course, they put him in the street after the season was over. But kind of like Dante Dion, there's just these guys, they come in, do their thing, and you just appreciate them. I'll, I'll always remember Kareem more and more fondly than I remember, like, Eddie Brown. Anyway, let's throw it out there. Okay, uh, Manuel Correa, I watch football all day Saturday <laughs> All Division One, Two, Three. Also, okay. Um, I kind of watch the big games. A couple of the teams I like. I usually watch a Purdue game or a Washington State because I'm a big fan. But um, yeah, my wife uh, likes to see me on on uh, Saturday because uh, on Sunday I'm pretty busy. Well, not only with football, but you know my my day job. So, all right, guys. I think we did good. We're at the 51 minute mark. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. Please hear, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, share with your friends. And I will mark it in my calendar Thursday night, uh, right when when the draft ends, we'll go live. I'll probably go on go live on another part of, of the set and uh and uh of the Ram Cave. I won't be here. And uh, we'll do we'll do a, a 15 minute show, 10 minute show, and we'll all complain about what happened and we'll share the shockers that take place. Okay, Manu Korea, I'm lucky. My wife likes football. My wife likes that for the last 20 plus years, I got paid to talk or write about football. That's what my wife likes. Um, I have a, three daughters and a wife, and I've yet to have any of them ever watch a game with me. So I am out on my own. All right, guys, I, I'd love to stay and talk all day. Ooh, 49er fan in the home. Watch out. Uh, I'd love to stay and talk all day, but uh, I got to respect your time. God bless. Take care. We will see you on Friday. And uh, yeah, go Rams.